everyone and welcome back to another exciting episode of Mr. Anas podcast series. I'm Hetri Shah, your host. And today we are tackling a topic that is both crucial and complex. The interplay of between obesity and diabetes. Did you know that according to a recent survey by WHO, approximately 850 million people worldwide are living with obesity and over 422 uh, million adults have diabetes and these staggering numbers highlight the growing glo- global concern and underscore the importance of understanding connection between these two conditions and to explain this we are thrilled to have with us a very special guest Dr. Ashirwad Pawar. Dr. Pawar is an idea certified diabetologist with a profound dedication to managing both diabetes and obesity. His patient-centered approach is all about tailoring care to individual needs and focusing on lifestyle modification that actually makes a real difference. With Dr. Pawar's extensive expertise both in diabetes and weight management, positions him perfectly to provide us with valuable insights into today's topic. So, welcome Doctor, it is a pleasure to have you today. Thank you, thank you for having me. So now, without further ado, let's just dive right in. Obesity and type 2 diabetes are often mentioned together, but the connection is not actually very clear. So, can you break down the pathophysiological link between these two conditions? Uh, yes. So let's first look at the, uh, what obesity is actually. Uh, so obesity is a medical condition characterized by an excessive accumulation of body fat that may negatively impact your health. So it is commonly measured using the body mass index uh, where BMI of 25 to 29.9 indicates overweight and uh, 30 or above indicates obesity. So obesity is not just about appearance, it's a complex disorder that increases the risk of men many health problems including type 2 diabetes, heart diseases, stroke and certain cancers. So contributing factors include genetics, lifestyle, environment and metabolic uh, factors. So once that's uh, clear, so let me come to the question uh, that is the pathophysiological link between obesity and the development of type 2 diabetes. So obesity is a key risk factor for type 2 diabetes. The pathophysiological con- uh, connection revolves around insulin uh, resistance chronic inflammation and ectopic fat deposition. So coming to insulin resistance first, uh, in obesity, especially visceral obesity, excess fat leads to adipocyte dysfunction, uh, causing the release of free fatty acids, that is the FFAs, uh, inflammatory cytokines, that is TNF-alpha, IL-6, and adipokines, that is leptin resistant. So these ris- uh, disrupt the insulin signaling, uh, making tissues less responsive to insulin. Next comes the chronic inflammation. Uh, adipose tissue, particularly in obesity, acts as an endocrine organ, releasing pro-inflammatory mediators. This systemic inflammation further contributes to the insulin resistance. Next is your ectopic fat deposition. So excess fat uh, accumulates in non-adipose uh, tissues like the liver and the muscles. Uh, leading to lipotoxicity and impairing insulin action. Uh, This interplay sets the stage for hyperglycemia, beta cell dysfunction and eventually the onset of type 2 diabetes. So obesity is like that fuel that uh, feeds the fire when it comes to type 2 diabetes. Think of your body as a machine where it is overworked, it becomes inefficient. In obesity, extra fat, especially around the belly, produces hormones and inflammatory substances that interfere with how our body uses the insulin, the hormone responsible for managing the blood sugar. Uh, So what is the result of this? Your body becomes insulin resistant and your blood sugar levels rise, paving the way to diabetes. When you gain too much weight, your body starts saying that I'm tired, I can't keep up with all this sugar control. And that's when diabetes steps in like an uninvited guest at a party. So like it is actually a real cascade of issues that actually starts with excess fat. Yes. So now let's just talk about certain challenges. So what are some of the biggest hurdles that healthcare providers face when managing patients who are both obese and diabetic? So managing obesity, uh, obese diabetic patients uh, present multifaceted challenges like uh, complex comorbidities. 
so patients always have hypertension dyslipidemia cardiovascular diseases and sleep apnea so treating these alongside diabetes requires a comprehensive approach next comes the patient adherence lifestyle modifications are critical but difficult sustaining long term dietary changes and regular uh, physical activity can be challenging for many patients uh, psychological barriers the stigma mental health issues like depression and socio economic factors that can hinder a uh, successful management uh, next is the medication considerations selecting therapies that don't exacerbate uh, weight gain is crucial providers need to balance glycemic control with the goal of weight reduction these challenges if not adequately addressed can lead to poor glycemic control progression of complications and a diminished quality of life so managing obesity and diabetes together can be a real balancing act kind of like juggling while uh, riding a unicycle so there is also stigma and motivation patients often struggle with uh, societal pressure and personal discouragement if someone feels judged they likely less likely to follow uh, through on treatments on lifestyle challenges um uh, changes sorry so complex treatment plans managing blood sugar while helping patients uh, lose weight is tricky some diabetic medications can cause weight gain making it a one step forward two steps back situation uh, next is the long term commitment obesity and di- diabetes management is a marathon not a sprint patient need to co- uh, consistent need they need consistent support but many lose momentum after initial progress so when these challenges aren't addressed long term uh, outcome suffer so poorly managed diabetes leads to complications like heart disease kidney issues and more it's a big like ignoring a leaky faucet you will eventually have a flood in your hands okay so then i can i think I, it is so multifaceted that this entire thing should be i yes. think so now let's talk about the treatment options that you were mentioning that how effective are these options for managing obesity in diabetic patients and what should doctors keep in mind when prescribing them So there are medications designed to help with both weight loss and blood sugar control. So GLP-1 agonists like semaglutide and liraglutide, they are hot topics because they target both the issues. Uh, these medications work by curbing appetite and slowing down how fast your stomach empties, leading to weight loss, while also helping control your blood sugars. So the options are first obviously GLP-1 receptor agonists, that is liraglutide and semaglutide, as I said. Uh, the, these are dual purpose drugs. promoting weight loss and improving glycemic control by enhancing insulin secretion and reducing the appetite next come the sglt2 inhibitors while uh, primarily anti diabetic they have the modest weight loss benefits next are the anti obesity medications that is orlist that uh, fentermin topiramet uh, dopopriya on uh, naltrexone these uh, specifically target weight reduction and can be considered based on the patient's cardiovascular risk profile Uh, these considerations include first is cardio uh, metabolic risk some medications have added cardiovascular benefits while other might increase the risk the side effects and tolerability as access uh, gastrointestinal tolerance tolerance risk of hypoglycemia and contraindications patient uh, preferences and adherence uh, involve patients in shared decision making but it's not uh, always one size fits all the considerations also include side effects like common ones include nausea and gastrointestinal discomfort not everyone's stomach is on board with these medications uh, this treatment can be pricey and not all insurance plans cover them uh, there are more focus on weight loss or diabetic control some drugs are better for one than the other see ultimately pharmacological treatments can be effective but they work best as a part of a comprehensive approach involving diet exercise and uh, behavioral su- uh, support you cannot be completely dependent on these drugs and expect some miracle to take place so now uh, you know bariatric surgery is another significant option that we are seeing so can you elaborate on how it fits into the management plan for diabetic patients so bariatric surgery is particularly effective in managing severe obesity when the bmi is more than 35 with type 2 diabetes so there are different types of surgery procedures like ruen uh, y gastric bypass sleeve gastrectomy and adjustable gastric banding lead to significant and sustained weight loss uh, what is the impact on diabetes so many patient experience remission of diabetes or a significant reduction in the need for medication post surgery due to improved insulin sensitivity and beta cell function 
So what are the long term outcomes beyond weight loss bariatric surgery reduces the cardiovascular events improves the quality of life and can even extend life expectancy so considerations include surgical risk patient selection criteria and poor surgical follow up to maintain metabolic benefits bariatric surgery can be a game changer especially for patients who have struggled with conventional methods it's like hitting the reset button on your metabolism so surgery options like gastric bypass or sleeve gastrectomy reduces the size of the stomach Uh, helping patients feel a uh, full sooner and absorb fewer calories uh, here's the kicker so bariatric surgery can lead to dramatic improvements in blood sugar control sometimes even before the significant weight loss occurs so for many patients diabetes goes into remission uh, meaning they may no longer need the medications but it's not a quick fix uh, surgery requires a life long commitment to dietary changes and regular follow up So there are also risks. So it's important to carefully uh, evaluate whether someone is a good candidate. Here, people think now that they have lost all the weight, they can eat anything because their sugar levels are within the normal range. They uh, made the choices regarding the physical changes of the body with the surgery. But what about the cravings and the mental health? Many of the patients who have undergone the bariatric surgery gain the weight back, or maybe more, due to non-adherence to the given diet plan or skipping the consultations with the doctor. Yes, this is actually very uh, good information that you've given, and this yeah. is something that usually happens very frequently. Right. Yeah. So now let's just talk about some prevention measures. So, uh, how can early intervention in obesity help prevent the progression of a uh, type two diabetes, and what role do healthcare providers uh, play? So, early intervention uh, strategies include lifestyle modification. so comprehensive programs focusing on diet that is reduced caloric intake low glycemic foods and physical activity that is 150 minutes per week of moderate intensity exercise are key to preventing the onset of uh, type 2 diabetes uh, behavioral counseling and support long term success often requires uh, ongoing counseling coaching and support groups pharmacotherapy for high risk individuals in certain cases that is pre diabetes with high bmi early use of metformin or glp1 receptor agonist may be want, uh, warranted uh, healthcare providers play a central role by identify identifying high risk uh, uh, risk individuals early providing education and offering tailored preventive measures so early intervention is like stopping a snowball before it turns into an avalanche when we catch obesity early before it spirals into diabetes we can prevent a host of problems down the road Uh, interventions include lifestyle changes like better nutrition increased physical activity and when needed medications to aid the weight loss even a 5 to 10% reduction in body weight can significantly lower the risk of developing type 2 diabetes so healthcare providers play a role of coaches and cheerleaders we educate patients so early intervention is stopping uh, a snowball before it turns into an avalanche So when we catch obesity early before it spirals into diabetes we can prevent a host of problems down the road interventions include lifestyle changes like better nutrition increased physical activity and when needed medications to aid the weight loss so even a 5 to 10% reduction in body weight can significantly lower the risk of developing type 2 diabetes healthcare providers play the role of both the coaches and the cheerleaders we educate patients uh, provide resources and often tailor offer tailored uh, plans to help them achieve sustainable results most importantly we aim to meet the patients where they are whether it's helping them make small and manageable changes or guiding them through more intensive in- interventions thank you for this actually in the prevention is always better than cure definitely definitely So now before we wrap up, our one last question would be: What is one common myth about diabetes management that you wish to debunk? So first of all, I would like to say the people uh, they they have this notion that you know eat less, have more physical, and that's the go to. Like you have to first take the consent, or you know it's a very de- de- uh, delicate topic to I don't like people come to you if if the patient is overweight, but they don't want to address the obesity, or they don't want to. Uh, that thing to be treated uh, but they have come for say they must have come for a fever or say cold or something you can't you know pass any comment directly starting with you know you need to lose weight or something you need to first understand whether they want to go through that road or whether they want to treat or uh, get uh, obesity treated once that is clear once they are comfortable with you discussing uh, the topic with you then you ask them you know have they tried it before 
so so that is uh, important because because there are many reasons you don't know you are meeting the patient now but you don't know where they have tried uh, you know they must have so one of the things that patients have that you know they are scared to talk about things or they might not that they are fine with whatever uh, body they are they are comfortable with the body they are in yes it is so now the thing is uh, mostly uh with the youngsters it's like you know you you are beautiful and the body your body is beautiful yes that is true but at a certain limit like you need to understand what um uh you know what dangers it has later in your life uh mm-hmm. people take it as a granted and say like it's it's a different thing if you have some health issue and you really can't lose weight if you have tried it if you tried going uh, working out or you know different uh diets and all and if you still can't lose it that is a completely different issue but uh, i may be blunt but if you are lazy and then if you are still obese then that's an issue right there which needs to be addressed but yes the doctors also need to be uh, vigilant and be you know take handle these things carefully um because uh, you might know that they might have some heart issue or some knee pain which they have not brought up you still have to ask them more questions about it so once they are comfortable with that then you start uh, taking like carefully it's like walking on eggshells like one wrong questions can you know they can just go into back into their shells so you need to do that and plus many uh, fads that you're asking about the diets and all every there's no one diet it's one standard as that that will give the same results to everybody you need to understand you are the better judge of your own body you need to understand what will act how to your body so it's different for uh, everyone but once that is clear for the specific person you should stick to that that is the only one diet that i can go for yeah true i think even communication plays a major role of the patient yes, yes. doctor relationship and yes that is true So as we conclude today's session it is evident that the link between obesity and diabetes is both complex and significant and Dr Pawar has given us valuable insights into how this condition uh, intersects and offers a uh, practical advice on managing and preventing them so thank you so much doctor for your expertise thank you thank you and thank sharing you, it with us and thank you to our listeners for joining in and remember with the right knowledge and support we can actually make a meaningful stride towards better health so remember that if you are a healthcare professional who is eager to uh, delve deeper into medical topics or have questions do not hesitate to join us on the medsign apps platform it is not just a resource it's a dynamic space where you can connect with your medical peers participate in meaningful discussions and contribute to the ongoing evolution of healthcare so until ne- next time take care of yourselves and stay healthy